Hi everyone. Today we are going to look at how Ansible can be integrated with Tenable Nexus in the hypothetical flow that's shown over here. Over here, the Nexus uh, scanner right, is running a scheduled scan across the fleet of uh, Windows Server. And upon completion, Ansible is going to get Nexus to generate the required report and then making use of REST API, we will pull back the scan results. So based on the scan results, we will be able to identify the required um, KBs, right, the missing patches for those uh, Windows servers, and then to patch the uh, servers accordingly. right. So we have a very simple single level approval of capabilities and functions uh, within the, uh, the Red Hat uh, Ansible tower. right. Then what will happen is that we will create a new change request in service now to patch a Windows server after getting the uh, approval over here. Um, then what will happen is that the flow will continue to go and patch the service uh, using the results that we pull from uh, Nexus. Upon completion of the um, patching of all these uh, Windows servers, we are going to go and update the ticket uh, in service now um, to say that everything has been done um, already, right? So let's just go to our environment. All right, so um, you can see over here that this is the um, Windows Server scan of that we have, right? So basically, it scans um, the service that I have uh, within my environment. So I have two Windows 2016 servers over here. And that if you were to look at the configurations, uh, basically, you know, it was uh, scheduled to scan just a moment ago, right? Um, at 4.30 uh, my time, right? So based on the scan results, uh, you can see that there are many different issues with them, um, you know, some of which are pretty serious and critical that has to be resolved, right? Then uh, if you were, ca you were to look at the remediations that's available, right? So they, they mentioned about installing this particular KBs in order to resolve the issues and that it is only affecting uh, one host. So one of the things that uh, I wanted to show over here, right, is that uh, we can actually filter out the host that has problems, right, based on the reports uh, that we have, which is in CSV format. And then Ansible will only target the host um, that actually has issues and skip through this, the, uh, the, the patching for the other host that is uh, all right, right, that has no issues. So in this case, you will see later on in the flow that, um, you know, Tower is just going to perform the patch, uh, patching, right, on the uh, .158 servers, and uh, it will not do anything on the .246 um, servers, right? So that's what it's going to happen, right? So um, I'm basically running the uh, Nexus Essentials uh, over here, right? So um, this is uh, a developer's version, right? So you could kind of uh, use it for up to 16 hosts, uh, and it's actually available for anyone to use, right? So if you want to look at the APIs, right, that is available, uh, you can see over here that, um, you know, just by keying in the API, it shows you what are the things that uh, can be done um, over here. Uh, so one of those things that I noticed is that you cannot really um, launch a um, scan, right? It seems that the uh, API is not enabled uh, for this particular version. Hence, uh, the stuff that we have been doing uh, in this demo is really to go and uh, schedule a scan and um, after that, uh, we try to start with the uh, the flow itself. So I understand that the enterprise version um, actually has that capabilities. So you could um, use uh, Ansible in that case, right, to trigger off a scan uh, if you are not doing a scheduled scan, uh, which is what we have done in this case, right. So um, the other things that we have over here, right, we we have the uh, GitLab where the playbooks are stored. Um, and then uh, I have the um, service now where you're going to create the uh, ticket uh, later on, right? So you can see over here that these are the stuff that I have at this uh, point in time. Right? So pretty much these are the uh, stuff that's uh, generated uh, within the developer instance uh, of service now. Right? So let's just go to Ansible Tower. Right? So I'm going to come in as the security engineer. So as the security engineer, I have access to a couple of things, right? So I can run um, the job templates um, over here, right? So basically, um, I'll be running this particular workflow. 
So if you look at this workflow, I, I don't really have the permissions to change anything here, right? So I can only execute uh, based on the role-based control permissions that I have. Um, the workflow visualizer will show what uh, the job templates that is being chained up in this uh, workflow, right? So we have the um, the first one is basically to figure out what are the patches that's required uh, to to be um, patched on the respective systems, and then this is approval uh, that we have to do, right? Whether to proceed or not, and then this is basically um, to perform the uh, patching, right, of the uh, service as well as to create the ticket just to inform. Um, the guys that um, you know something is being done um, over here, right? So let's just go back. Um, you can see over here that um, these are the projects as mentioned, right? All the playbooks are actually stored uh, within my GitLab, um, and um, the inventories will have information uh, regards to the uh, host and the uh, group of servers that I have, right? So. I'm basically going to um, perform actions on the 2016 service that I have in my environment. Right, I have two of them. Right, so um, you can see over here that uh, these are the two servers, and that uh, I'm using um, WinRM right to connect, and um, using NTLM as well. Right, so let's see. Right, so let's just go back to the dashboard. Um, we were to run this. So you can see over here that uh, from the survey form. Right, uh, of tower, you have the um, different uh, variables that you have to fill in, right? So, for instance, the access key, the secret key for Tenable, Nexus, right? And then um, you have the scan name, right? So, this is uh, the Windows uh, server scan, um, which basically corresponds to this, right? So, you can see that this is the scan that we have in Nexus. And uh, let's just go back. You can see that uh, I do de I do uh, define my uh, developer instance uh, from ServiceNow as well. Uh, using the um, Snow module that we have in Ansible, we will be able to interact with uh, ServiceNow, right? Then this is the server, um, sorry, the user for ServiceNow, right? Then the um, password that I'm going to key in. And all these are the stuff that I will key in for the survey form. Um, after which, right, what's going on is that um, we will check through. You can see that anything that is uh, secrets uh, will be encrypted, right? So you cannot see from here, right? It's not going to show. Um, so we will hit launch. So at this uh, juncture in time, uh, Tao is basically doing a git pull towards uh, GitLab to pull out all the information. Uh, with regards to the playbook, you can see that we are doing things like generation of reports, getting the uh, report generation status, checking that everything is good, and then downloading the report as a CSV uh, file, right? So that's what uh, we will be doing. And then we are basically reading the the CSV report, right? So there are quite a couple of lines, right? So this thing is going to go into thousands of lines whereby we are going to pull out the stuff that uh, we are actually looking for, right? So what I'm interested for this particular demo is basically um, to pull out the information uh, with regards to a summary table of all the uh, required um, KBs uh, that we need in order to patch the system, right? And whether or not um, we, you know, uh, what are the things that may or may not be be required, right? So we know that for the second server, for instance, it doesn't really have um, any KBs that we need to um, patch. So um, it's going to return the results as uh, not needed. Right? So you can see that uh, these are things that we pull out from um, the um, Nexus, right? So if you were to look at the artifacts that we generated, right? Basically, these are the stuff that uh, is missing, right? from this uh, 158 server. As for the 246 servers, um, there is nothing critical that we need to um, patch uh, in that regards. So you notice that um, this um, 5000803, right, corresponds with the remediations, right, that is uh, specified uh, by Nexus, right? So then, um, these are the stuff, right, that um, Ansible is going to uh, fix um and install later on right um so just to give you a view right so you can see over here that 
uh, all these files are actually generated um, over here. Right? So if you were to look at um, the timing now, right? So it's 16.51, right? So all these are generated like one minute ago. So if you were to look at this CSV report, right? Basically, these are the things that we have pulled out, right? So I have a summary and I'm pulling out all the list of information that's needed is for the 246 service uh, based on the report, right? There's nothing that is uh, required uh, in terms of the actions from us to uh, patch on this uh, remote host, right? Um, so if you were to just look at it, I also generated the CSV files uh, respectively, right? Pulling out the information for that particular entry, right? That you can see that uh, 158 and 246. So basically, Ansible is using all this information, right, to perform uh, the next course of action. So, I mean, uh, in the nice format, if you were to open up uh, this CSV file, you can see that, um, you know, it looks like this. Right? Pre pretty much, I'm just extracting the required information uh, for us to perform this uh, next course of action, right? So, similar to what you have in the playbook, right? So it's basically just going to show you, you know, pulling out the scan ID and after that generating the report, uh, you know, getting the um, CSV file, uh, making some changes to the, um, the columns, right? Just to make sure that everything is in the format that we can ingest uh, using the read CSV module, right? So nothing special, right, um, over here. So the things that you notice uh, here is that, um, I actually need the approval, right, to proceed. So of course, you know, all these things can be done, let's say, um, directly using ServiceNow, right? ServiceNow has, uh, we have very good integration with ServiceNow, right? So you can either do it that way or that, uh, you know, what I'm doing here is that kind of, kind of assuming that uh, this is done within our team, right? So we just wanted to um, get a very simple, quick uh, nod from the team lead uh, or the change request admin in order to proceed. And we purposely set uh, a timeout, right, of uh, one hour, right, so that uh, if no one acknowledges this, we just let it uh, expire be so that we don't perform any um, dangerous uh, action uh, on the, uh, the target server itself. So in this case, I need to come in as another user, right, as the uh, change request uh, admin, right, in order to be able to approve this. So you can see over here that as the change request admin, I will be able to approve uh, this particular action. So I'm going to approve it. And the next thing that I do is I'm going to go back as the security engineer. Right? So you can see over here that uh, this thing is going to start uh, running. Right. So you see the approved. And the next thing that it does is that it actually goes and um, create a request in ServiceNow for things that requires changes. So, so we know that um, this particular um, ticket, right, um, is only created for the 158 server, right? So we don't have to do anything for the 246 server because you're not doing anything on, on it, right, at this point in time. So if you do a reload on ServiceNow, you can see that a new ticket is created, right? So this change request has been created. And we have under the nodes, right? Basically, I list down all the required uh, KBs uh, for this particular server, right? As part of the work node uh, that we have. And it's all done by uh, Ansible itself, right? So, the next thing that it does is that, um, you know, it starts to do the actual patching itself. So let's just uh, go and check out the uh, server one. So you can see that um, over here, this is the exact same um, KBs that's missing, right? Uh, and that uh, we are really going to um, do the updates. So if you were to check on this, sorry, the task manager, you can see that the CPU utilization has hit a very high uh, value, right? So basically what is going on is that Ansible has already started um, running the updates uh, in the background, right? So there are quite a lot of things that uh, it is trying to install over here, right? So uh, it, it will just uh, continue for a while. 
uh, you know, and uh, we have actually um, tell the system to auto reboot uh, if needed. Um, and uh, basically what you will see later on is that uh, Ansible will go and uh, reboot the system so that the entire um, upgrade can be done in one single um, flow, right? So that everything is done properly. So let's just wait for a while for this to be completed. So you can see that the uh, system is starting to restart. It's all triggered and handled by Ansible in this case. So you can see that uh, it's starting to install the updates, right? So these are all done uh, by Ansible, right? You can see that uh, it's working in the background, right? So what's going on is that um, it's just going to continue to make sure that this uh, particular server is uh, properly patched and that it actually will make sure that uh, the system gets uh, restarted because uh, these are uh, major patches that um, requires a reboot of the system. So the modules that we have in Ansible is uh, smart enough to know that we need a reboot for this thing to take effect. So let's just continue to wait for a while. So we see that the uh, server is uh, restarting, right? So you can see that everything is automated, right? So there really isn't a need for anyone to monitor this whole process. You just have to let it run, right? In this case, um, you know, we we are just showing for one service, but obviously Ansible can work on large number of servers uh, at any one point in time. Okay, so we see that uh, it's going in, right? So then if we were to look at uh, what are the stuff that has been um, updated. It's just gonna do a final check, right? Uh, and then after which you will see that there will be a change in the status to say that uh, everything is uh, updated properly. So let's say if we were to just go to updates. History, right? So this has been installed. Okay, so um, Ansible has finished, um, you know, updating. And the last step that it does is actually to update the change request ticket before the whole workflow is done. So if we were to go back to look at here, right, you can see that uh, it just came in as well, right? So let's look at the timestamp, right? So over here, um, we have uh, actually updated the uh, service now ticket to say that uh, we have finished uh, patching, right? So um, you can also see that the whole workflow is done. It's it's all good. Everything's successful. Uh, it took a while because uh, this, this whole, um, I mean, this this uh, patch is actually pretty uh, huge, right? So it took a while for everything to be installed properly, right? So uh, this brings us to the end of the, the demo, right? Uh, thanks for watching.